Customs. We are back again today working on our M715 project for a customer. If you've been watching our videos, you'll find that we've got our LS7 mounted in the Jeep now. Uh, we got our motor mounts tacked in. We've also got our 4L80 in there. So now we are going to be working on getting our NP205 transfer case mounted to that uh, 4L80 and then we'll also be working on our uh, transmission mount for this so let's take a look. Alright so prior to starting to film we went ahead and we got our NP205 up in here we wanted to make sure that we even had enough space to start shooting a video so uh, and it's a really heavy transfer case so it's a little bit involved um, definitely take your time block it up do what you got to do, use a good transmission jack that helps one that can angle uh, a couple of different ways and uh, it went, actually went a lot smoother than others. Uh, so a lot of things to think about as we start to get to uh, putting the transfer case down under here and the uh, all of the different things that have to go around this. But first let's start talking about the transmission. Now we didn't buy this transmission, uh, it came to us, it was a rebuild. Uh, that came to us uh, from the customer. The one thing we, to always check, and we had a little bit of an issue with this one, make sure that you know the bolts will go in cleanly. This one actually had two holes that we had to go in with a tap and clean up. Just the uh, outer edges of them looks like they were uh, they were uh, starting to strip the threads. So I don't know if they had too short a bolt in something, and um, you know the ends of the threads the the, the outside of the threads it started to strip out. So we had to clean up a couple of holes in that. Purchased uh, new uh, metric bolts for this, so 10.9 grade bolts for this, and we made sure that we had some bolts that were you know, pretty long, about three quarters to an inch long, to make sure we get up into that transfer case and have enough meat to hold on to this big heavy uh, transfer case that's going behind the transmission here. So make sure you check that. Now we are using a um, an adapter that we found uh, from a locally here that fit up pretty well. Now the issue we've run into though is that this adapter has uh, six uh, six inch holes on center on the bottom of it. We'll get into that in a minute, but it's been a little bit of a trouble trying to find a mount uh, actually for that. Another thing we had to do before we were able to mount this uh, transfer case to the transmission is that we did have to swap out the front transfer case uh, input. Um, the previous input was a short NP205 input. Uh, whenever we mounted that to the transmission, we only had about three quarters of an inch of engagement between our 205 and the 4L80 on the output shaft of the transmission. The output shaft is a good two and a half, three inches long. So we swapped that out to a long uh, input shaft on the 205, so we have a whole lot more engagement with our transmission, uh, especially with this Jeep because it's going to put out at least 500 horsepower. We need to make sure that we don't create a weak point, um, especially one that would be semi-internal and hard to detect if it did actually fail, uh, that that was what the failure would be. So we swapped that out. If you're looking for that, we'll put a link to that in our description for this video. Uh, we also replaced the yokes. Um, we tried to find yokes that were either uh, a CV style for the front here, and then this rear is going to be a U-bolt style, which we typically will change from any strap yokes to a U-bolt style yoke. A U-bolt style yoke is much better than your typical strap yokes. The straps will tend to bend and break. Uh, all new seals in it, you know, throw through a coat of paint on it, and pretty much it was ready to go. So now let's talk a little bit more about where we're at with the position in the Jeep and the mounting. All right, so back under here looking at, you know, these space constraints that we have. Uh, luckily, since we're dealing with a truck frame, it's a little bit wider than a normal Jeep, so we are in a pretty good place. We were able to get it up here without any modifications. However, moving forward, we will have to uh, modify this side because the amount of transfer case that's over here is really close to this bracket and uh, we won't need the top part of this bracket as we make our mounting so it won't be a problem to go in and cut that out. 
Now, prior to this, uh, this drivetrain going in this Jeep, uh, the stock drivetrain used these large brackets on either side of the frame, and it had a large cross member that went across and bolted in. That's what hold, held the back of the transmission. Now, prior to uh, having this NP205 in it, it used a divorced transfer case, so that transmission cross member was quite a bit different in design versus what we're gonna have to do. But the good news is, is where this uh, transfer case mount lines up with these uh, frame mounts, we'll actually be able to reuse at least the bottom half of these frame mounts, which should be uh, more than substantial to hold our uh, transmission mount. Now, the other things that we had to look at as we got this down in here is of course, making sure that we're centered on the Jeep, which luckily uh, with this cab here, it's got a couple of ribs in the bottom of the floorboard, which are centered on the cab. So it's pretty easy for us to eyeball. We actually measured it out when we installed our uh, engine mount. So that'll help us to be able to make sure that we're still aligned pretty closely. Now, the other things that we have to keep in mind, obviously are two drive shafts. So we already see that we're gonna have to basically make sure that we build our cross member so that our front drive shaft could go over uh, that cross member. Uh, and the other big issue on this Jeep is going to be exhaust. Exhaust is always uh, kind of a pain, especially if you're gonna run dual exhaust. And this one will be even more of a pain because it has some massive tubes that are be coming back. So for us, that's part of the reason why we're gonna have to take this bracket over here uh, once we get the cab off and go ahead and probably cut off the top half of this bracket so that we can work on trying to route our exhaust over here and pass the transfer case on the side because uh, we really, once we get everything mounted, are not gonna have any space uh, up in here to try to mount our exhaust through. We'll also, you know, end up having to put some sort of heat shielding or something um, either under the cab or inside the cab to try to make sure that we don't generate too much heat on the uh, driver's floorboard here. All right, let's get to the actual building of our cross member for the mounting of our transfer case and transmission down here. Now, as I may have mentioned, with this adapter that we had for the 205 to the uh, 4L, 80 um, and if you find an adapter we had an issue with this one actually we actually had to have it machined the 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 boss that basically fits down into the transmission here was a little bit too large in diameter we had to have about a 16th taken off of that so if you uh again a big reason why you need to make sure you fit up all of your parts on the ground before you start doing anything like this because you don't want to be under here and figuring out that your your adapter doesn't exactly fit your transmission so moving from that, with this adapter, this has a six inch on center hole pattern down here. Now we want to try to use a, uh, a motor mount, or excuse me, a transmission mount that is readily available in case in the future someone would need to, uh, need to replace this. They don't have some sort of custom thing they have to go and try to find to replace. So a lot of times we'll try to find something that we can use that's readily available. Now this six inch hole pattern though is odd. And we're not able to find a, we were not able to find very easily a transmission mount that would work. What we ended up finding was that a Cherokee transmission mount is really close. This whole pattern here is, is so close that we're only going to have to take about an eighth inch off of the inside of these holes to get this to fit up in here. Now, with that, in the Cherokee mounts, the bottom, even though this here is centered on the on the Jeep, this pattern is not. So in looking at how we wanted to lay this out, what we're going to do is we're going to put this pattern offset to the passenger side for a couple of reasons. One, we've got a lot more weight over here on the passenger side. And two, when the engine is under power and you're on the throttle, the top of the engine is going to want to rotate to the passenger side. So I'd much rather have this mount over here to where it's seeing more compression than it is tension trying to pull it apart. So let us go and do a little bit of work with a uh, small die bit and we will come back and mount our transmission mount. All right, we have 
dremeled just a little bit off of each of the holes on the inside and we've mounted it up here and you know we want to make sure we do still have a little play we don't want it tight to where it's the bolts are try trying to be forced outward just do have a hair uh, of movement back and forth now we've just thrown some bolts in here eventually we'll use either some flange bolts or some uh, a washer underneath here to make sure we spread out the load especially since we slotted that hole now all right so now with it up there and in place we need to check a couple of things i'm wanting to check and see how level it is across the jeep and then because we are using uh, a mount that has four mounting locations on the bottom i need to check front and rear as well and you know across the jeep it's pretty good front to rear though and with these mounts you, know, you can make sure it's up against it all the way you can see that we well you may be able to see you see we do have the front of this mount which is higher a little bit and we've already gone and what we've done is we've put a transfer case where we want to we've got it basically where i've got a hand hands worth of space uh, across the top to make sure we don't run into anything uh, in the cab and we've also raised this up as far as uh, we can because one thing we will want to also do is as we build our our, our uh, cross member across the bottom i will want to put some holes make another mount that's up higher that so that we can recess our nuts so that they're not down here and getting hit by any road debris or especially if you're off-roading you wouldn't want them down there to get hit by rocks or, or sticks or anything else so you do want to protect those so they don't get damaged now since we do have this and it's not exactly flat to the frame we're going to be parallel to our cross member we're going to have to uh, alter our mounting system up here above the cross member to try to uh, account for that because i do not want to put this uh, this transmission mount into a state where even just with it sitting there it's constantly trying to fight uh, what its normal shape uh, would be which with these cherokee mounts they are shorter on one side and taller on the other just because of the angle that the engine and transmission is mounted now we have decided to change our design a little bit and that's something that you know as you get into this um, you, know, you got to keep evaluating how you want to do it i really want to take as much of these these uh, large brackets out as possible because they are pretty large and they're really in the way we don't need a lot of this so we are going to cut this up in an angle and add another bracket at the front which will really work well uh, with this cross member as we uh, design and build it but then it'll also allow us uh, as much room as possible especially over here to get our exhaust and to try to get it well, pulled down away from the cab as much as possible so next what we're going to do is we're going to grab some cardboard and start mocking up what the bottom piece of our cross member will look like. So we've got our skid plate made, basically. It's probably hard to see in the video because we're stuck under the Jeep here. Uh, made it at a quarter inch, put one flange in the front of it, uh, mainly for the strength. I didn't put a flange in the back, partially because we're coming back here and also because uh, that way it'll shed uh, debris and material. And it's part of the reason why we made out a quarter inch to ensure that we have enough strength. Uh, but the front flange obviously also is for the for the structure of it. So let's see how it fits. So the cross member fits great. Up here at the front, I actually have a couple of plates that will weld to the frame. So we'll actually have eight bolts that'll hold it with the two um, on the sides. The one thing I did want to point out though is that we don't want to go any higher with our transmission, but we can see that our studs are going to stick through. So what I'll do is I'll just cover, I'll cut another quarter inch plate that has the same hole pattern and I'll cover this up and it'll be a, enough space to just protect those studs. Uh, out here in these bolts, we'll actually flip them over when we do the final install. Right now I'm just mocking it up. Looking above this though, we 
pretty much only have a quarter inch back here at the back. So we'll end up cutting a quarter inch plate uh, to space the still space the transmission mount up off of this cross member uh, but it looks looks pretty good and uh, we're pretty happy with it we've cut our final plates so we're going to need for our transfer case mounting so basically we've got to put everything back together and do our final tacking So now with everything bolted up, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to tack this in. This, with it bolted up and this plate bolted to the transmission mount, we'll tack it where it is, which we'll, we'll look at it after we're done, but you'll see that it'll have a bit of an angle to it. So that way, you know, we can make sure that, like I said before, this mount is not being uh, put under a lot of stress when it's just sitting there.